Hi, I'm Sean, and I love music. So 2023 is almost over, so obviously it's time for me to make an arbitrary and overly opinionated list on all the albums I loved over the course of 2023 and share it with you a lot. Good idea, Sean. Thank you, Sean. And very original too. Thanks, I I think. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So let's start with an honourable mention, and um, I wanted to call it my main girl, Hara Namuri, who stealth dropped a new record recently titled Insane, and since I only heard about this last week, I've not really had a chance to sit down and get lost in it and digest it. It probably would have placed quite highly, um, what with Hara Namuri just being so gosh darn brilliant. Plus, I already had the script written, so aye. Honourable mention, Insane, Hara Namuri, go check it out. Number 20, a bit of Scottish tinged black metal with a hell of a dollop of melodic death from Ruad with their release 1296, soaring, epic, triumphant and most importantly it's dead Scottish. Next is Gridlink with Coronet Juniper, dizzyingly forward facing grindcore with deep seams of both post hardcore and black metal, um, like being in a mech suit, falling from the atmosphere, on fire, entering your missile pods and letting rip with your miniguns, absolutely, absolutely victorious. Truly, truly brilliant. A beautiful and deeply melancholic and harrowing black metal release from Denmark, ASCII's Om 100 AR, morose and grim in all the best possible ways, coupled with a hauntingly beautiful melodic streak and song structure, um, absolutely gripping till the very end. The boys from Tesseract bring the war of being angular and thumping progressive metal, uh, mechanically proficient and razor sharp, deliciously gente, with some amazing soaring vocals and melodies um, the boys in Test Rack genuinely never disappoint and this is another slapping release. Grimy grim and brutal black metal with a strong socially conscious streak and tracks that make you want to windmill your head violently um, it's Imperium Mortalia by Dismal Aura um, terrifyingly focused and absolutely relentless, a sexy black metal release. Valbard released The Weight of the Mask an utterly essential and devastating post-hardcore release that welds both their hardcore riffage, battering drums, throat shredding vocals and rage to glittering harmonies and a real ear for a relentlessly catchy melody. These guys and girls absolutely deserve to be absolutely enormous in 2024 and um, I'll be watching what happens with them next year with very very keen interest. At number 14 is the uncompromising and confident transcendental black metal of 93696 from Liturgy. Liturgy are from the mind of the one and only the Hela Ravina Hunt Hendrix, um, a real culmination of the experimentation the band has been famous for across all their releases so far, all culminating in this wonderful album. It's enormous, it's staggering, it's sometimes quite difficult, it's sometimes really really beautiful, but it is absolutely always enthralling. Absolutely love it. Emotionally raw, devastating and utterly terrifying high concept record from Christian Hater, saved um, under her Reverend Christian Michael Hater in name, now leaving the lingua in a mantle behind her, dripped back and featuring some of the most immersive recording and production that I think I've heard all year. Um, this is sumptuously delirious and I am so very keen to see where Kirsten goes next. This is an absolutely stellar record. At number 11 is Horrendous's ontological mysterium, thrashingly wild and endlessly bizarre progressive tech death, um, an absolute masterpiece from the boys in Horrendous, absolutely bonkers, inventive and a downright fun time. Uh, Prog has never sounded so thrashy. Utterly masterful and emotionally devastating doom metal excellence from Oak with the release Disintegrate, a single staggering track that travels the gamut of bleak emotions. It's crushingly heavy with moments of beatific ecstasy and beauty, all produced with the sharpness and clarity that is intoxicating, thunderous and devastating in equal measure. Wild, wacky and enthralling progressive thrash from the mad lads in King Gizzard and the Lizard wizard with petrol dragonic apocalypse, a true metal odyssey featuring dragons, witches, global warming, giant robots and some of the most delicious thrash riffage this side of the 90s. Feedback drenched, doom tinged beauty and brutality from Big Brave with their release Nature Morty, uh, who continue to be one of the most interesting bands on the planet. Uh, gravity heavy and experimental, Nature Morty squalls and croons, thunders and whispers, destroys and creates. Um, 
this is an essential release from the band and you should absolutely go check it out. Number eight is Scathing an Elemental Progressive Tech Death from the Eldritch Abominations that is Sulphur Aeon and their new album Seven Crowns and Seven Seal. Um, an album that welds the band's raw experimentation and musicality uh, with a newfound sense of melody and sheen. It's towering and cyclopean like the old gods that forged it. This album is an absolute face melter. Triumphant and thunderously heavy indigenous black metal from the windswept wilds of the Adirondack Mountains, uh, Black Braids, Black Braid 2, a victorious sequel to the band's first album. This album is weaponized to appeal to me. Scything tremolos, big riffs, devastating blast beats, throat bleeding roars, mystical and nature praising lyrics featuring traditional Native American instrumentation and arrangements, all presented with a really sumptuous and enormous sounding production. Absolutely outstanding. Epically labyrinthian progressive techneth from the Australian musical masters Nea Bliviscaris with Exo. Enormous riffs and drums are welded with skyscraping vocal lines, nimble and skittering bass lines, and absolutely enthralling violin sections. Um, for me, Nea Bliviscaris have yet to produce a bad record, um, and Exo continues their steely and watertight brand of dizzyingly brilliant progressive death metal magnificence. Absolutely stunning. Oh, we're in the top five now. Emily Brune continues her one woman crusade to utterly dominate my record collection uh, with Spine. Um, a more melodic outing than Marid, but a heavier one than Folksange. Uh, Spine feels like a culmination of all the different styles and moods that Amelie has brought to the marker table and mixes them into a heady brew of surprisingly trad first wave of heavy metal riffage, um, along with Scandinavian synth pop and soaring beautiful folk melodies and instrumentation. Um, absolutely effortlessly breathtaking. My boy Austin Lund continues to bring the good stuff once more with The Rhyme of Memory from Panopticon. Colossal, epic and outrageously heavy, this is by far Panopticon's densest and most crushingly produced record. The songs are monstrous multi-part sagas, heavy with sorrowful melody and some of the most brutal drumming I've heard uh, since The Scars of Man. This may test the patience of some listeners being so labyrinthian and enormous, but those willing to invest time into the album will find it to be staggering and sumptuous and they will be well well rewarded. Number three is Mesmore's prosaic ALN returns with one of the year's bleakest and most harrowing and remorselessly grim records. Prosaic, this is exceptional and harrowing black and doom, streets in tears and blood and grime and dirt, digging its own grave in a dying forest in the deep wilds. It's heavy, it's black as pitch, this album is a wall of squares squalling guitar and howling depression and I for one am very very much here for him. Number two is another amazing band from Scotland Hell Ripper and Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags and it's so close to the top as well. Hell Ripper is absolute balls to the wall, head banging, black and thrash that seizes you by the throat with its metallic fangs, beats you around for 45 amazing minutes before slamming you on the floor, blood soaked and bruised. Um, I love absolutely everything about this album. It's so breathlessly inventive, it's brutal and dare I say catchy. Um, Hell Ripper deserve to be absolutely enormous and I hope 2024 brings them even more success. There are some bands that when they release an album they will always always automatically be a high contender for a top album of the year and the boys from Enslaved are absolutely one of those bands and this year's Heimdall is easily my record of the year. This album is absolutely everything I want in an enslaved album. Razor wire, black metal riffage, welded to thundering drums and bass, uh, mind expanding synth and guitar passages, weird time signatures and breakneck time changes, esoteric lyrics delivered with both howling roars and star scraping vocal highs, and most importantly, their ceaseless, relentless drive to drag black metal kicking and screaming into the future. Heimdall is yet another career high in a career of career highs and simply makes me even more excited to hear where the band goes next. Oh, and if you also like these Cosmic Vikings, I recently did a video on Run, uh, one of their, their best albums. Um, it's somewhere on the screen. You should go check that out. It's really, really good. I'm quite proud of it. Yada yada. So 2023 year, a year of absolutely blinding, amazing releases. Um, and I'd love to hear what your album of the year is in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, folks. As ever, be kind, be safe, and watch out for each other. And have an amazing new year when it hits. Cheers. One, two, three.
you can't hide.